So our next, our next person here is, is Ryan Hill. And Ryan Hill is a stand-up comedian. He's been around in the, in the Lehigh Valley and beyond for about 10 years. And he has opened for Pat Oswald, David Tell, Colin Quinn, lots of really big names. And he's been a semifinalist in Philly's Funniest Contest and is trained with the Upright Citizens Brigade and Second City. So he's the programming director at ArtsQuest, vocationally. Uh, great, great place. And today he's going to be telling us a little story. Normally he does stand-up. But this will just be a, a funny story. He's not... He, he wanted me to tell you he's not going to pick on you. So you can, just, you can just relax. You can enjoy. You can laugh. And here he is. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I guess that's the extent of how much I promised I would talk to you uh, directly, so you didn't think I was picking on you. <laughs> um, Kate... Uh, when Kate asked me to do this, she had said, you know, we're, our, our theme is uh, hope. And uh, I didn't know how to tell her that stand-up comics uh, don't have hope. Um, <laughs> or stories uh, that leave people feeling hopeful. They mainly leave people thinking that that stand-up comic is hopefully in therapy. Um, <laughs> so when I was kind of plumbing through what I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about, I do have a, a story that... Uh, I've only told a couple times, it's not the funniest story, um, but it is a story about a time where I realized uh, I better get some hope, uh, and, and I did find it uh, after this. Because this, to know, for the two things you need to know quickly about myself uh, before I tell you this story is, number one, uh, I don't drink coffee, I hate coffee. Uh, and number two, I was a major liar all through high school. Just need to know those two things. Uh, I actually used to work at a uh, McDonald's uh, on the Turnpike, one of the most hopeless places you'll ever find, uh, ever, in the history. It's not actually there anymore. It's like they, they gussied it up. It's an Annie Ann's and uh, a Quiznos, but can't lie to me. That's still a hopeless place. Uh, but it's cleaner now. It's much cleaner. Um, and I remember I would, try to, uh, I would try to drink coffee to get through those days, and I couldn't. That's how I knew. I just I, I was not going to be able to drink coffee because I, I would pour my, I would do that 7 a.m. shift, get in, pour coffee, and just drown it with sugar, drown it with cream just to try to choke this stuff down, and it never worked. It didn't work. So I actually, in order to do that, I would drink gas station cappuccino, uh, and I gained 30 pounds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Big Macs didn't help either. I'm now a vegan, also because of this. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Um, secondly, as I told you, I, in high school, uh, I grew up in, uh, in Jim Thorpe. And uh, uh, I, I didn't grow up in the town of Jim Thorpe. I grew up to the north of it. Um, and uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't really hang out with uh, friends in high school, really. I just stayed and listened to the radio. And so when I would go to school, I'd have to concoct these stories uh, about what I was actually doing to not sound so pathetic. Um, and I would say, thing, I actually made up that I was a, uh, a hockey player. I was the star hockey player for Pennsylvania's Keystone State, State Games team. I don't even know if there is a Keystone State Games team, but I owned this lie to the point where when it came time in gym class to pick for a floor hockey thing, when I wasn't picked first, I threw a fit. I was like... Huh? Come on. And then when I scored a goal, I was like, yeah, that's right. Keystone State Games. Huh? That's how much I committed to this line. I actually would say that I would, my grandparents lived in Quakertown at the time. I would say to uh, people in school, like, yeah, I was down in Quakertown for the weekend, like going to parties. Quakertown. <laughs> now, to Jim Thorpe's, just so you know about Jim Thorpe, uh, that still sounded big. <laughs> Um, but I, I left high school thinking, believing wholeheartedly that everybody believed these lies. I, I thought that's, I just figured they all knew this. They all assumed this. They assumed that I'm this crazy hockey player who likes to party in Quakertown, right? So flash forward to uh, a few years later, I'm 26 years old and I am, have moved to the Lehigh Valley and, um, I am, a uh, a part-time traffic reporter uh, for B104. Uh, and as you probably have gleaned from that sentence, 
I had no money, all right? <laughs> no money whatsoever. Um, to the point where even like my change jar, like I would, I'd have a, I had a Tanqueray bottle uh, that I would have dimes in uh, because I separated my change. This is how much, how little money I had that I would just try to like, you know, quarters go in the bourbon bottle <laughs> uh, because it's the bourbon bottle. Uh, and then dimes, and I, I, I was down to like a Tanqueray bottle of dimes and I didn't even have that. And I was, uh, there was this one particular morning in question where I was uh, running late to my, my traffic shift, my early morning tra traffic shift. It was five, uh, you know, you're supposed to be in at about 5 a.m. It was already 5 a.m. and I was on 378 trying to get on 22 and I'm driving and I realized I had just, I had thrown myself out of bed, just like threw a hat on and got in the car. Cause you know, when you're in, in radio, you don't have to worry about looking pretty. You don't have to get yourself in the shower, anything like that. Like most of those people you are listening to uh, on the radio at that time, haven't showered in maybe five days. Um, <laughs> Just a heads up when you're listening uh, to the radio. Uh, Bear Man and Keith haven't showered since 1974. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm driving in and I get this sinking feeling like, oh my God, I forgot my Tanqueray bottle of times. I have no money. I don't even have money like, to get a vending machine soda. There's no caffeine. I have no caffeine. How am I going to get through this? And as strange as that may sound, like I only have to get to 8.55. That's it, that's the magic last traffic report is 8.55. However, when you're staring at the... <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Much. <laughs> when you're staring at uh, 5.15 a.m., 8.55 a.m., honestly feels like that could be next Friday, you know? That's what you're staring at, especially when you have no caffeine prospects. So I get there, I get there just in time for my first report. I, I put in the first report, I make up some stuff. I mean, it's 5.15, if there is an accident, it's all, you know, it's your fault, you avoid that. Um, uh, <laughs> but you should be able to see it and get around it. Um, so I just say everything's clear. And I just start kind of evaluating, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with this? And I just, I get some water. I, I hunker back in and I'm like, all right, you can make this. It's just 8.55. It's just 8.55. So I get through the five o'clock hour. That's okay. I get through the six o'clock hour and my energy is just, it's just starting to go. I'm just, I'm like, I'm like hunkered down on the console. I now understand that I'm in a traffic booth. Like I'm in a little side booth that's not... Nobody in either of the studios can actually see me. They don't want to see their traffic reporters. Um, they just want them to be somewhere. So if, if I fall asleep, nobody's going to know until they throw to me and hear snoring. Like nobody, like I, there's nobody to keep me in check. All right. So finally it's seven o'clock and I'm like, I've got to, I've got to figure something out. So I, I walk into the kitchen. My next report is uh, coming up at 7.09, and it's 7 o'clock, and I, and I walk in, and I, I scan it real quick. I see that coffee pot, and I'm like, oh, I can't, no, I can't do that. It's just, I, I, I can't choke this stuff down. Um, there's no tea, all right? And then there's a vending machine, but again, I've got no money, all right? No money whatsoever. So I go back in, I wait for an hour, and I look back at the clock, and it's 7.03. I'm like, that was not an hour. <laughs> um, crap. So... Now, I go back into the kitchen and I open the refrigerator. When I look in the refrigerator, there's nothing in the, there's just like food and random stuff in the main part, but then I look on the side, you know, that side drawer that usually has like mustard and horseradish or random stuff like that. But in there, there's this one glistening, shining can of wild cherry diet Pepsi. I look at this thing, it looks back at me. It says, there's no name on me. Nobody's claimed me. You can have me. And I'm like, I can't, I can't have you. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't bring you. I don't know you. Like, I don't, I, are you sure? Like, we can do this? I mean, no, we can't do this. And I shut the door and I go back and I do my 709 report. I do that 709 report, but then immediately after I do it, it's just the energy of having done that got me through that 709, but it's 710 now and I know I'm not making it to 855. I go into that kitchen, I grab that wild cherry Pepsi, that diet wild cherry Pepsi, go back into my studio and I slam that thing. Slam. I just drink it all the way down, put it on the uh, counter and I'm like, ah, that feels good. 714 comes and... 
the, uh, the co-host on B104's morning show at the time, uh, walks by the studio, sees me, says hi, goes into the kitchen. 7.14 and 23 seconds, <laughs> Laura comes into the studio, my studio, says, Ryan, uh, where'd you get that can of Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi? I look her right in the eyes and I say, I brought it in. <laughs> she says, okay. And goes into the studio. It's so innocuous, it could have been a commercial for Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi. Like, hey, Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi, I bring it in from home. You know, like that, that back and forth. So I sit back in my chair, like any evil man does when he's just accomplished a task. Just like, yeah. 719 is my next report. I, bring on my, I put on my headphones, lock in the studio, and that's when I hear Laura, live on the air, saying, you just, you know, it's just my treat for the day, and I can't believe he just looked me right in the face and lied to me. <laughs> on the air. Live. It's honestly as if she was saying, this guy I work with lies, and here he is with your traffic. <laughs> So I do that 719 report, trying not to sound like the six-year-old caught with his hand in the cookie jar. I put the headphones down and I'm like, what do I do? And I decide I'm gonna go into that studio and I'm gonna double down. I walk in and I'm like, Laura, I, listen, I heard, heard what you said and I know it's hard to believe, but I, I really like Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi. I bring it in from home. I know you like Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi. I like Wild Cherry Diet Pepsi. I brought that in from home. I, I know it sounds very strange. I know it sounds very random, but hey, did you put your name on yours? And I go back to my studio. I sit down. And what the image I'm left with is the nod that Laura gave me. She gave me this nod. Like, it wasn't like a, oh, sure you did nod. It was like a, oh, this is a really sad event nod. You know that nod like you give where you're just like, I need to figure out how to get out of this room right now. You know? You know that nod? That's the nod I got. And that nod made me realize nobody in high school believed anything I said. Nobody did. They were having parties up there in Jim Thorpe. They all stayed in Jim Thorpe. Uh, and just talking about what an idiot Ryan was. That's what they were doing. And it made me realize that I needed, uh, quite frankly, to get it together. Uh, and I managed to. Um, I can't say that I haven't lied since. It would be a major lie to say that to you. Um, however, uh, it really, it was one of those, I don't want to call it rock bottom because there's so many lower rock bottoms than the one that I, I'm lucky that that was my rock bottom. Um, but it was the one that made me focus in. Uh, I started doing stand-up comedy soon after and uh, a lot of great things have happened since due to hard work and uh, a little hope. So that's my story. Thank you very much. Was any of that true? <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Sadly, sadly.